In this video, we're gonna be exploring my favorite social media post format for churches. Now, this kind of social media post archetype has been around for a little while, but it's really just been this year where I've seen more and more churches begin to embrace it. And, and I love that because it really is one of the most effective and powerful social media posts that you can publish. So, in the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk through a handful of real examples and explain what you need to do to make sure that you get this kind of post right. So, let's dive in. Well, hey there, I'm Brady Shearer. This is Pro Church Tools, and I'm here to help you and your church navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. If we're just meeting for the first time, consider subscribing and hit the little church bell to make sure you're getting notified when we drop new videos. So, what is this mystery social media post that I love so much? Carousel posts, also referred to as slideshow posts. Now, like I said, these kinds of posts have been around for a while. In fact, when we launched our social media subscription service for churches three years ago, back in 2018, the slideshow format was one of the first kinds of posts we included in that service. And if you go to my own Instagram account, at Brady Shearer, give me a follow while you're there. To this day, you'll still find that the majority of content that I've published in the last year plus is carousel content. That's how much I stand behind the post format, both for myself and for churches. And what we're now seeing is more influential churches use this kind of post as well on their channels. Here's a recent post from Elevation, carousel format. The hook is how to care for your soul in a difficult season. Here's another example, this one from Life Church. The hook here, five truths to remember when you feel inadequate. Now, before I get into tips on how to design posts like this and some of my best tips and tricks, do make sure to stick around until the end of the video where we talk about how to design content like this. Let's talk briefly about why this kind of post format is so powerful because if all you do is copy what other influential churches are doing or what other brands are doing or blindly follow my advice, that's only gonna get you so far. It's imperative that you understand the strategy and philosophy that undergirds why we do what we do online. So let's start with one of the foundational principles that I hold to dearly when it comes to social media for churches. And that is, social media is a ministry. It's not just a vehicle to promote ministry. I'll say that again, social media is a ministry. It's not just a vehicle to promote ministry. Now. This is something that we've been talking about for a while on this channel, and it's a big paradigm shift that many of our churches are in the process of making right now. We've been in the process for the last little while, but if this is a newer idea for you, here's an easy way to grasp it. Uh, take a look, this is a TikTok account that I follow, and the channel, this account, it's all about parenting young children. I have a young child myself, and the reason I follow this account is because this woman publishes helpful content. Like in this video, she's talking about how to respond to your child when they're complaining and whining. And within this less than 60 second video, she explains her philosophy and offers up a ton of helpful tips. Now imagine if instead, the message of the video was, hey, Want to learn how to respond when your child is whining and complaining? Join me at my next in-person class. The end. Well, why would I follow her on social? If she's just gonna use her social accounts as a billboard to promote, there's really no reason for me to interact, to engage, or to follow at all. Another example, here's a cooking Instagram account that I follow. Now, why do I follow it? Because this person shares recipes directly in the post and includes video walkthroughs. The content is helpful on its own. It has value. It's not a tease promoting something else. And you can look across any industry and anyone that's excelling on social, this is how they use their social platforms, not as billboards to promote, but as channels to publish useful content and directly connect with their audiences. And so for us as churches, we need to be approaching social in this very same way because it's not 2012 anymore. And if your church is using social like it is, you're gonna stand out, not in a good way, stand out as a sore thumb because the rest of social, the landscape just doesn't look like that anymore. People won't have a reason to follow you and they definitely won't have a reason to engage or interact with the promotional content that you do find yourself publishing. Bottom line, think of it this way. Use social media more like a pulpit, use social media less like a bulletin. Keep that in mind and you'll be on the right trajectory. Now, of course, there's a lot more 
to get into as it relates to social media policy and strategy as a whole that we don't have time for in this video, but I've published a separate video on that. It comes with a free downloadable policy template for your church. The video is called Social Media Policy for Churches, The Definitive Guide. It's linked above and in the description below. Okay, now let's get to the specifics of carousel posts. And there are basically three components to doing carousel content well. Number one, the intersection. Number two, the hook. And number three, the leap. Let's talk first about the intersection. And this is the most important element of any carousel post that you create. And the intersection gets to the heart of why our churches are on social media in the first place and why the world would care at all to connect with us online on these social platforms. And the first thing that we need to do here is understand why our churches exist. And, you know, we all say it differently, but for virtually every church, we exist to help fulfill the Great Commission and the greatest commandments. In some way or another, the purpose of our churches is to help people to love God, love people, and make disciples. Now, perhaps you have a pithy mission or vision statement that you can insert here for brevity. Either way, though, our social media strategy should be measured by its ability to help people in their journey towards loving God, loving others, and making disciples. Here's the problem, though. The average person in your church, and especially in your community, not connected to your church or any church, does not care whatsoever about this mission statement of ours. They just don't. They've got a lot going on in their lives, and our church's vision and values aren't especially high on that list of things that they need to be thinking about on a daily basis. So knowing that, it's your job to find the intersections, identify the intersecting points where your church's mission crosses over with the everyday problems of the people you're aiming to reach. Every great social post finds the intersection. And believe it or not, I'm actually taking this idea directly from Jesus. When Christ comes to earth, he disrupts the status quo, He's talking about the kingdom of God. His ways are different from our ways. So how does he make his message more accessible for the people that he interacts with? He finds the intersections. He talks about agriculture, farming, baking, economics, labor, wine, sheep, and he uses those as on-ramps to help people understand and engage with the kingdom of God. Our aim is to do the same thing with our carousel posts. Find the intersections between faith and culture. Where? Can the good news cross paths with the lived experiences of the person that you are trying to reach? Well, let's look at some examples now to clarify some of these more abstract ideas. In this first example, our title slide reads, Nine Reasons to Have Hope Right Now. Now, question for you, does this qualify as an intersecting point between faith and culture? As a simple exercise to figure this out, ask yourself, does the message of this social post align with the mission of our church? Finding hope? Yeah, I'd say that aligns with the good news. Okay, great. And then secondly, does the message of this social post resonate with culture? And in this case, again, I would emphatically say yes. A lack of hope, a feeling of hopelessness, that is familiar to every one of us. We've all, we've all experienced that or will experience that at some point in our life. It's a universal pain point. So it's a perfect example of an intersection. Here's another. This post starts with a question, feeling lonely and then answers that pain with promises from scripture. So again, that certainly aligns with the values of our church and it meets people where they are. Again, targeting a universal need or longing familiar to every human, a feeling of loneliness. This is the power of the intersection, identifying the natural points where the trajectories of your church and the culture meet. That's how you reach people in a way that affects folks deeply and personally. And this is what so many churches miss. And that brings us now to step two of how to construct these carousel posts. Once we've got our intersection, the second step is the hook. And think of this like the headline of an article. This is essentially how you're presenting the intersection to the world to get them interested. And there are a bunch of great ways to do this. Let's talk about two of my favorites. The first is the rhetorical question. We can cycle quickly through some examples of this. Struggling with a big decision, worried about the future, feeling anxious. These are universal pain points that, again, everyone is familiar with. So irrespective of your journey of faith, you can engage with content like this no matter where you find yourself at. And the second way I like to format the hook is in a list format. So here are some more examples of that. Nine prayers for 2021, eight daily declarations to speak over yourself, or nine things God wants you to know. The hook 
is how you get people engaged with your carousel post to begin with, much like the headline of an article. So it's important to pull them in for what's next. Two great ways to do that, numbered lists and rhetorical questions. There are of course more, but those are a couple of my favorites. And that brings us to the final step of our carousel post, the leap. Now, at this point, you've identified the intersection, the crossover between your church's mission and a universal need. You've got people interested in this idea because you framed the intersection with a great hook. Now it's time to deliver on the solution, the response. And here is where you make the leap from your intersection to responding with wisdom from scripture, with the teachings of Jesus. So let's go through a full carousel post example now. I know you've been patient, thank you. Nine things God wants you to know. He loves you. Someday you'll understand. He's with you. There's no need to fear. He can give you rest. He's not finished yet. He wants to know you more. You can trust him. He forgives you. So we've got promises from God with each of their scripture references. Now, obviously I cycled through those slides pretty quickly. Keep in mind on social platforms, users have complete control over how fast they slide through the carousel, unless they're watching on something like stories and even then they can hold down their thumb and pause on a certain slide. Let's look at another example though. Nine reasons to have hope right now. God deeply loves you. God has a purpose for you. God answers prayers. God can provide. God can heal you. God is still in control. God will fight for you. You have God's grace on you. God is faithful. And you know, your carousels, they don't have to be 10 slides either, like those previous examples. That is currently the limit on Instagram. Here's a much shorter example, feeling lonely. And then we've got three direct excerpts from scripture that meet people in their feelings of loneliness. So that carousel, it's only four slides. Let's talk a bit now about design and some practical considerations for carousel content. First, don't presume that for a post like this to work, the designs need to be remarkable. Here's an example of a post in our own social media subscription service. The hook is, there's something you need to know, which is by the way, another great example of a hook. You inject a little bit of mystery. And then the leap is simply, God loves you. He always has and always will. And the design here is so simple. We've just got black and white text paired with black and white backgrounds. Again, ridiculously simple. With that being said, Carousel posts, they do generally require more work than other types of posts, simply because there's more than one slide, right? And this is where our social media subscription service, Nucleus Media, can be especially helpful because if you're sold on the format of carousel posts and wanna begin using them in your own social calendar at your church, well, you can simply join Nucleus Media, download a carousel post that you like and publish it, done, easy. If on the other hand, you're more of a tinkerer like myself, you can download the source files in Photoshop format, change the text and create new say, carousel posts using our designs. Every single post within Nucleus Media comes with the Photoshop source files, so you can iterate on our designs as much as you'd like. And this really gives you complete creative freedom to take the content in any direction you want. One more thing I'm really excited about is that we recently partnered with one of my favorite designers. You can find him at Design by Ruben on Instagram. And we brought in 12 of his carousels into Nucleus Media. You can't find these anywhere else. If you click on packs in your Nucleus Media dashboard and then slideshows, you'll find 12 of his carousel posts in there. The designs are absolutely exceptional. The work is done for you. But again, the source files are available for download also, so you can tinker if that's your thing. And with these ones, all the fonts used are Adobe fonts. So if you are editing the source files in Photoshop, those fonts are already gonna be linked up for you just to, again, make it a little bit easier. And uh, the great thing about Nucleus Media is that it's also the most affordable creative subscription out there for churches. We're talking about carousel posts in this video, but altogether, there are more than 30,000 creative assets from done for you social posts to 4K stock footage, cinematic worship backgrounds, Photoshop, and After Effects templates, and more all there within Nucleus Media. If you link up subscriptions to content like that independently, you're likely gonna end up paying hundreds of extra dollars each year. With Nucleus Media, it's all under one roof for less. So check it out, the link for Nucleus Media, it's in the description, or you can also go directly to nucleus.church slash media. I'll encourage you, start a 30-day free trial. There's no credit card needed. You can start downloading some content with no obligation on your part whatsoever. 
Let's close out now with some practical considerations for carousel posts rapid fire. First, I'd only publish one of these a week maximum. These are very dense posts and that's part of what makes them so valuable, but they can be a lot of work. So you don't wanna overwork yourself or put too high expectations on yourself. And secondly, right now you cannot publish carousel posts in a slideshow format on Facebook pages or in Facebook groups. You can still publish a group of images in an album on Facebook and they'll show up together, but it does look a little bit different for the end user. So my recommendation for you, keep these for Instagram in the feed, but then also they're great for Facebook stories and Instagram stories. You can adjust the aspect ratio to be vertical or just publish them as is in their square or four by five frame. That'll do it for this video. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. I'd sure love it if you could hit the like button I mean, I mean, you did make it to the end of this video, so there must be something about it that you enjoyed or you just dislike me so much that you had to watch until the end, kind of like rage sort of thing. I hope that's not the reason. Hit the like button, either way. You can get started with Nucleus Media at nucleus.church slash media and get started with these carousel posts. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Brady Shearer and DM me when you do publish your next Instagram carousel post. I'd love to see it and we'll talk real soon. Thank you.